Hi guys, welcome to today's video. Today we're looking, we're looking like this. I was like, do I put makeup on and introduce it? Or do we just go in for the real, raw version? So I went for the raw because I'll forget to do an intro otherwise. I'm kind of bummed out because I'm wearing this cute jumper. That has a teddy bear on it. Can you imagine if I have dinner down my shirt and I haven't seen? Um, it's got a cute little teddy bear on it. It's from Topshop, RIP. And I was like, oh, I'm feeling so like, autumn, well, I was say full. But I'm far. No, um, I'm feeling so autumn, autumnal, uh, with my brown nails kind of matching the bear, the gold vibes, the like the contrast and I was just like, I'm feeling so great. I thought I would um, sit down, kind of do like a chatty, get ready with me. We can talk about a few things whilst I put on some makeup. Nothing particularly new. There's a few things. Okay, so shame, ring the shame bell. There's a few things here in front of me. Uh, these four things specifically. So the Melt Mariposas palette. Oh, I thought it was going to slide out then. The Mariposas palette. Wait, is that what it's called? Amor. Amori. Amori Mariposas. This is like a year old, okay? And it's still in the box. I've swatched it, I think, maybe, but I haven't actually used it on my eyes. I've also got my Barium Take a Brow Shape and Define Brow Gel that's still in its cellophane. And um, <laughs> this is again a very laughable one. I've got the MAC. Uh, Lunar New Year bit so I've got a highlighter and a lipstick that I picked up in their sort of Lunar New Year celebration business can I even get it out can I even get it out yeah like I picked this highlighter up because I was like oh it's so pretty kind of underwhelming when I got it I was kind of a bit peeved off and I got a lipstick and then I've got some other things that I use anyway um, but just haven't picked up in a while so like Urban Decay Lash Freak, my NYX Bear With Me, my Rimmel London The Multitasker Concealer. I've also got some Swede lashes that I don't think I've ever applied, but we've got that and uh, a MAC Glow Play blush that I don't think I've ever applied or swatched. So like, you know, that's great. I'm not using the makeup that I have, ridiculous. So I thought I'd just apply some of this makeup, not necessarily first impressions, just me having fun with my makeup and playing around with stuff that I haven't played with in a while or ever, which is really shameful because that's stupid, that's stupid makeup buying, that's ridiculous. Um, and I really wanted to talk about uh, brands that I think are in trouble. This has no factual like basis, by the way. This is just my thoughts, my one in the morning can't sleep thoughts, you know? Um, so yeah, let's kind of get a little bit closer so you can see the dreadful state my skin is in for me and um, we'll apply some makeup. Is this like close enough? You can see my balding hairline from stress. Love that. I don't really want to go in with a primer, so I'm just going to go straight into the foundation today. Um, I will list all the products that I've used on my face. I know I've been really bad at that lately. <laughs> Look at me. Uh, I know I've been really bad at that lately, but I kind of went back and updated everything. So apologies that I've been rubbish. I've had a lot going on in my life, okay? Not an excuse, I'm just telling you the reasoning. So um, as I apply this, I've written a few notes, but they're not comprehensive, it's bullet points. So I'm gonna try and stay on topic and not deviate, but apologies if I do. So brands that I think are in trouble. When I, I just want to kind of define what I mean there when I say that, um, like I said, I've got no factual reasoning behind it. Uh, for me, it's just, I think, personally, they're becoming repetitive or I'm not seeing them being talked about on social media as much or I think they're releasing very interesting releases or not releasing a lot um, or just kind of like falling behind, I would say, in like the trends of things or not as hyped up as they used to be or you know just like not as good as they used to be or, you know there's a couple of brands that i think sold brilliant products yet are no more and it's interesting to see a few brands kind of follow the same patterns i think covid really hit a lot of brands really hard um and you know even a year later coming towards the end of 2022 i think there are still brands that are still struggling to recover so uh, let's just get straight into it the first one i've got here i feel really bad for saying this but i think juvia's place i don't know i just i can i feel i sense i sense a vibe and i don't know if it's just me that senses this vibe and i don't want it to be true because by the way i like all these brands i'm not bashing them at all because i genuinely like at least a couple of things that they've released um so i'm not targeting them because i don't like them i do uh, yeah, I think Juvia's Place kind of is like dry. I don't know, maybe it's just how I feel. I just think they could do with a really good, strong collaboration, perhaps kind of revive them. And I'm not talking about a celebrity uh, collaboration, I'm talking about um, makeup lovers 
collaboration with a makeup influencer or someone known for their makeup think something that's going to get makeup lovers buy it regardless of what it is you know that sort of collaboration um i actually did a video that said collaboration palettes are always the best palettes so i'll link it up in the eye for me it's true so I think a collab for them would look quite cool um, and perhaps like a little bit of a, I don't know, something different, something to spice up what they've already got. You know, they've got a lot of uh, eyeshadow palettes. They have started to expand into, um, you know, more lip products, eyeliners. Um, I don't think we've seen a mascara from them. Obviously they've got base products. Their base products are thick, like really, really thick. Um, so maybe we could see an expansion of lighter products, like more skincare-y, come into that modern world, as you know, I'm trying to say, you know, uh, become a bit more fashionable with some thinner, more present, more current, is what I'm trying to say, um, products. I think that could look really interesting. Um, and I think Juvius could do maybe better with their marketing. I don't know if they send PR actively, but then that might be because they don't release a lot all the time. And I'm by no means, do you know what, that looks really nice, that foundation. I've been blending and it looks really, really quite cute. Um, by no means do I think brands should release more to stay pre like current. I keep saying present. <laughs> I don't think they should be releasing more as such. But sometimes I think releasing four times a year, I think, is appropriate for keeping on top of the trends. Um and not being like dispensable with trends, but I'm saying like keeping with the times and seeing what people are actually after, you know. Back in 20, what, 17, 2018, people were all about the pomades for the brows. Now people still use pomades for the brows, but uh, the way we do things is just slightly different. And um, I think makeup style is slightly different as well. People are wanting different things. People are wanting less in their collections. Um, and using what they've already got. So Juvius, you know, even turning their palettes to magnetic pans might really uh, intrigue people. I know that um, kind of the people, I just put myself in the eye, the people that use their makeup that they've already got to create their own versions of things. I do that myself as well sometimes. I do a DIY um, palette series. I need to film another video for that one. But, you know, that's fun too. So I think Juvius need to just turn things up a little bit they need to do some new things and um, explore some new ways of doing things because i think they're just getting a bit dry anyway moving on the next brand i want to talk about is uh, <laughs> uma uh, uoma uoma beauty uma I, I call it uma but i'm not sure if that's how you actually say it so apologies if i am saying that wrong there is no intent to do that so uma beauty came to boots maybe like last year i think it was maybe the year before it was very very recently so actually maybe it was last year um and interestingly i am not seeing a lot of people talk about them you know you, you think that because they're on the shelves more people would talk about them um it's got to be an investment getting into a shop because you've got to think of that stand that you're paying for you're paying for all the distribution there's quite a partnership to go into a store especially when it's not your own you know um and I have seen nothing but things go on sale and kind of, I can see Uma Beauty, or Uma Beauty following the same pattern as Bites Beauty, which is going into stores as kind of a, come on, we can push this, and it flopping a little bit. The reason I think they're flopping, flopping maybe is a horrible thing to say because maybe they're not, I haven't seen their books, you know, but the, th the reason why I think they're not being hyped or they're not, seen all over social media or talked about in everyday like people that aren't on social media but just go to the shops to buy their makeup i think it's because of the price like honestly sometimes and you know if you want to set your makeup at a certain price you absolutely do it who who has to say that you have to be famous or well known to wake up your prices but i don't i'm not convinced that uma beauty has such a following that it can rely on just that to get people to buy their products i don't see them talked about online at great length unless i'm just not seeing it in my al algorithm um and it's not like they have the history of clinique which is another brand i want to talk about or essay lauder they haven't got like that recognition that maybe people that don't really wear makeup that often um seem to get 
pulls to, you know? So I kind of see them, unfortunately, following the same pattern as Bite, like I said, where they're a bit too expensive for people to take the risk on because they've never heard of them. But equally, like when I go into the shop and physically stand there in front of the Uma Beauty stand, I don't really feel inspired by anything that they're selling. Like I I've thought about picking up a couple of eyeshadows, eyeshadow palettes before and you know it's one of those things where I pick them up put them down pick them up put them down the quality seems lovely I have nothing against the color story but the whole brand for me there's something missing and I don't know what it is there's just something that I am not totally bought by and I don't think I'm the only one there I feel like it's it's not exciting to look at like I look at Fenty for example and I'm like oh and I could stand there just like looking at the same products every single time I walk into the shop but for Uma Beauty for example like I, I'm just if I've got five minutes to just look at a couple of brands as I'm waiting for something I'm not going to go to Uma Beauty's counter and look at the makeup or look at anything they're selling I don't know why maybe it's just a me thing but I can really see them not like I can see them struggling because I don't I don't really see them thriving I don't really keep up with their releases maybe they need to get into a bit more PR maybe they just need to get into better marketing maybe that would help but yeah not sure on that brand I, I can't see it surviving in increasingly tougher times that the world is having the next brand I have on my list is wow that is wet um, is Iconic London. Now, I was kind of umming and ahhing about even mentioning this one and maybe striking it off the list, but I feel like Iconic London remind me of Becca so much in the sense of they have some really standout products that I think that they rely on a bit too much in the sense of they're not that easily well, are they easily accessible? They are sold on like Look Fantastic and Feel Unique, so maybe I'm completely, I'll eat my words there, but I'm not sure that I'm not sure that they're thriving I don't know maybe I'm wrong maybe I'm wrong I just don't feel like they release a lot of things and if they do I'm never that interested by them again totally my opinion but I'm never really enthralled by what they have to release but every single time I do try something from them I do end up loving it I think Iconic London have really lovely quality it might be the packaging again it might go back to the marketing i'm not sure what they're going for it does feel a little bit like high fashion well, i was gonna say london but maybe that's because it's in the name but high fashion um very gold and very clean white marble golden like it just feels a little bit like a business girl it you know it kind of like strikes me as that sort of vibe but i don't i don't know like i'd like to see them just release some more interesting things I think they sell wonderful products but I, it's just never the brand I go to and maybe that's just me so I was kind of umming and ahhing about even talking about that one but uh, I'd be interested if you feel the same about any of these brands but if you feel the same I'm gonna go into this blush which is actually the MAC one the MAC glow play blush in so natural if I like this I might buy more after I've tried things out. Oh my God, it's so putty-ish. Do you know what a brand that I think has well and truly kicked the bucket is Soap and Glory. Uh, not their body care and their shower products or anything like that. I'm not sure if this is even coming off. I think it's just like a very buildable color. I wanted to go for something natural because that eyeshadow palette is like whoo, in your face. Um, yeah, Soap and Glory, I'm so bitterly, bitterly sad about because I enjoyed all of their bloody products like their foundations their eyeliners their lipsticks were my favorite I still have them wait where are they wait this side no this side uh are they on display still oh yeah they're here they're here sorry one idiot so these are their old versions and then their newer versions I I have all of them okay I love them I know that some people didn't but I personally loved them and i enjoyed their eyeshadows i enjoyed everything soap and glory had to offer but i have seen that in every single boots that i walk into i think they're a boots own brand like boots have an affiliation with them because they're not sold anywhere but soap and glory site and boots i've just noticed that they're not getting restocked the carousel is not looking great it's fallen apart they have the same shades that are restocked which is clearly like back stock for things they've released nothing new to my knowledge they've released nothing new uh, at least in the last two years i've seen nothing um there's always a promotion on them to get rid of them yet they never seem to go away i don't want them to but it's almost like they're trying to get rid of stock but they always have a little bit more stock to add to it 
but it's always like just like one shade of random lipstick or one eyeliner and you're like well, what is the point in this uh it just feels so weird and there's something going on yet soap and glory the shower aspect is like thriving bringing out really cool exciting things all the time things that i want to buy but need to get through my stuff before i do i think the down fall of that brand mostly was their bloody christmas collections like if you went into boots any time in january or even like late december you'd find the bloody soap and glory sets half price which so there's no point in paying full price for them and every girl in the uk i can bloody guarantee like 99 percent of us have received a soap and glory set at some point in our lives and you kind of are happy about it but sad about it i know that some people get irritation so they'll be obviously sad but people that didn't have irritation like myself you'd be like yay i'll use it it smells good but half of you's like i don't want this <laughs> um so yeah weird one i i think that either soap and glory are doing really badly to the point where the makeup's just going to go or or fingers crossed they're going to reboot the whole brand which i really hope that they do they're going to reboot the whole brand and they're going to release new makeup all revamped all modern oh my god how much would i love that their brand sucks at the moment and i'm so sad because the quality of products that they had was so good and like everything was under 10 quid i'll get off my soapbox now but i'm just saying low-key devastated a brand that i was also thinking about like i was imagining walking the aisles of boots in my head or like online what brands do i ignore or like just cast my eye over um, and Pure Cosmetics was one of them. Now, I know there are some people that die on their Pure Hill. Like, they are there for everything that they release. And I know that their, like, goal, I think they said, maybe if I'm confusing the brand with someone else, I'm so sorry. I think that they said that they wanted to be, like, the number one makeup brand, which I just think is, no offence, like, laughable. Um, they seem to come out with good things. I've seen a lot of people. Where the hell is the pigment on this highlighter? I'm just saying, like, I'm okay there it is but it's like you can see it but I can't um they seem to release things that people like but I've never seen things that like people love like I know Raw Beauty Christie loves them and talks about them but I'm not sure if that's like an American like if Pure is just bigger in America but I can see Pure doing a little bit of a Becca and not doing too well everyone thinks they're doing great but actually secretly not doing too well um do I have any facts no <laughs> just my opinion um, I don't know, I'm just never like a bloody excited by anything they release. I always think their packaging's really blooming clunky as well, like unnecessarily clunky. To the point where I'm like, ooh, <laughs> like, ooh, I'm not paying money for that. It just looks like it should be 12 quid and it's 30, you know? I, I, yeah, no, you know, no. <laughs> I'm gonna blend this highlighter into my, like, cheeks. It's like weird. I can't see anything, but I can see this like intense glow reflection but i've got studio lights on but when i get my little baby yoda mirror up close it just looks like powdery mac what have you sold me <laughs> an extra dimension skin finish maybe it's like yeah maybe it's supposed to be like this i don't know whatever let's roll with it i'm just gonna put my lip liner on what are you guys thinking about urban decay that's one for me oh my god look how beautiful this packaging is wow it's so stunning look this golden lipstick is it gonna focus look at this gold with a beautiful tiger on love it um mm, love it yeah what are we thinking about urban decay lately i <laughs> don't want them to not succeed because i bloody love urban decay or oh, i love like the nostalgia of urban decay because i don't think i've bought anything recently that i've actually liked um i don't think i've liked half of their releases lately let me do this lipstick hang on <laughs> mm, 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 mm love 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 it i have no idea what we're gonna do with this palette yet um i don't really want to go neutral but i kind of want to go green if you go like green and brown and just fully embrace it i'll zoom in for you so you can see sort of what i'm doing but i have no idea myself um yeah urban decay for me are a brand that is so nostalgic and i bloody love them but they don't excite me everyone else like all the other brands seem to be like on the new trends being really cool you know picking up the right sort of color stories the right packaging like come on just let naked not die but i think naked needs to die for a while i think urban decay really messed up by riding a horse that wasn't there <laughs> naked one two three 
was where it was at. Then you had Naked Smoky, then you had like, yeah, Naked Cherry, then you had Naked Honey. And it's like, okay, okay, we get it. Like how many times can we not just have like the honey palette? You know, like, can we not just have the palette that's, that's cool? And it could be in the Naked format. Like it doesn't have to be called Naked just because you want to keep it in that packaging. Go for your life, hun, if that's what you want to do. But my God, they're just, they've got, yeah, they've cocked it up for themselves basically by boring us all to death. Um, the pigmentation in this palette is bloody divine, but the fallout has ruined my face. So love that for me. Uh, yeah, Urban Decay, man. I don't know. I, I think it's just like they could do so much better with the resources that they have. Do you remember when they did that? Um, was it the heavy metal? I think it was the heavy or the crushed metal, that palette. And I, do you know to this day, I wish I knew that it was limited edition because I would have picked it up. But it was that like really cool packaging where, like, it, it'd pretend that you'd like slammed it and it crushed, but it was actually a slide out, a little bit inconvenient. But it was slide out and it was all like metal shadows, like neutral on one side, a mirror in the middle, which I did think was a little bit gross. And on the right hand side, it was like all colours. If they release that today, but just like a little bit more modern, revamped, less wasted packaging, just like made it this sort of size made like this sort of size i think that that could be really really cool and people would absolutely run out to go buy that i mean i certainly would also if we're going to talk about like nostalgia why are they not like doing another vice palette they were bloody cool like those vice palettes i think were way before their time in some respect so yeah i don't know i just i would love to see urban decay come back strong but at the moment they're the popular kids at the school reunion that's no longer popular and I don't think that they're going to struggle as in like go out of business because let's be honest they're one of the biggest brands is it that L'Oreal has I think it's L'Oreal Estee Lauder is it I think it is yeah I'm pretty sure it's owned by L'Oreal um it's one of the biggest brands so they're not going to just let them die a sorry death but equally you know there's only so much you can do there's only so much resuscitation you can bring to a brand before you're like it's not looking good it's flatlining it's really flatlining uh, i would love to see their books and see what the biggest sellers are i wonder if people that aren't that enthusiastic about makeup or like people buy those naked palettes that don't really know too much or do they rely on a strong fan base that come back each time i don't know but urban decay haven't even got like bronzers do they i don't even think they have bronzers in their line you know like when you say it out loud, I don't think they have bronzers in their line. They had those like two bronzers with the palm trees on, but I don't think that they've released them since, apart from being in those disgusting Neapolitan palettes. Just an opinion, just an opinion. But yeah, I don't think they've got any. And then their blushes and highlighters, haven't seen a revamp of them in a long time, unless I'm completely out of touch. They could be doing some cool cream products. They could be doing some cool palettes. Like they could be doing so much bloody more. And I saw that they were supposed to be releasing like that weird quickie, quickie stick foundation or concealer, whatever the bloody hell it was. Haven't seen that. Where the hell's that been? They obviously released or well, sneak peeked that a bit too early, but yeah, there's some weird, weird things happening with Urban Decay. And I just, I see them going downhill if they don't turn it around. They have got a chance. I think they have got a chance. This Urban Decay, it is Urban Decay, yeah, Lash Freak Mascara. Turns my head for the right reasons. I mean, it's messy AF, but it's a brilliant mascara. Would I buy it again? Maybe. Wouldn't be mad if it came into my life. But something like that, that is cool. That is new. That is innovative. That's amazing. Seeing the seventh naked palette in this like in the same year is not cool, not innovative, and is very uninviting to me. It makes me yawn and it does not make me check for new releases. Okay? Okay, moving on. You know what? Whilst we talk about big brands, should we talk about um Too Faced? Because I think what they sell at the moment is boring. Like so wow, that's mintier than I thought it was gonna be actually. I'm gonna have to zoom out slightly because it's just making me like unfocused all the time, which is very frustrating. Um, oh no, it's a bit minty. It's a bit mintier than I was expecting. Okay, let's just run with it. Yeah, another big brand for me that is boring me to a very slow yet early grave is Too Faced. What the hell is their marketing strategy? What the hell is the plan? What's, what's the theme? What's the goal? What are you going for? What are you going for, Too Faced? Like, is it cutesy? Is it sexy? I'm happy with either. 
but just holler at me when you've worked it out for yourself. When you've finished having your midlife crisis, come back to me, hit me up, you know, because I feel like people have asked the age old question of, what is your vibe? What are, what are you going for here? You know, um, because it's just so juxtaposition. I think Too Faced are still trying to ride the coattails of the peach palette, like, you know, the peach days where everything was like perfect peach or peach, pu peach puff, I don't know what it's bloody called. I think they're still trying to ride those coattails, but the beauty community is not the same anymore. It's just not that, it's just not that way anymore. And I think they don't realise that. I don't know, do they realise that? I'm not sure, but it does not give me the vibe that they do. They release the same old crap time and time again, and I could be less interested. I haven't picked up one of their tin palettes, like their eyeshadow palettes. Did you hear my hip click then? Age is the magic number. Um, I haven't picked up one of their palettes since, did the Bon Bon came, like, come out last or was it the white peach, matte peach palette? I can't remember. Maybe it was the Bon Bon palette that came out after that. I, I can't remember, but it's like back then. We're talking five years ago, maybe, was the last time I bought something from Too Faced uh, or an eyeshadow palette at least. I've tried their complexion products. I think they're okay. I think they're cool. I just think Too Faced don't, aren't hyped anymore. I think they're just a bit boring and they don't really know what their own concept is. And I think <sighs> people want to follow things that are sure of themselves a little bit. And I think, you know, you wouldn't, you'd want to follow an inspirational leader. You wouldn't want to follow a leader that doesn't really know what they're talking about or isn't sure of themselves, as in sure of what they're talking about. And I think Too Faced just aren't sure of what the bloody hell they're doing, or they're at least giving that vibe. Are we running with this? Is this nice? Sure, it's green. I mean, I love it, you know? Yeah, I don't know. I think Too Faced could be potentially in trouble, not in the short term, uh, because I think they've got enough money lying around to fix, you know, to get them out of any problem. But for me, when I see brands, I don't know if this is just like, uh, I don't know, I don't know if this is just my perception of things, but when I see brands going into the Estee Lauder, Estee Lauder cosmetic company store, you know, the ones that have like, you see in outlets and their reduced makeup, MAC is in there, but MAC is never in there with their good stuff. MAC is in there with their like frosted pearl purple lipstick and you're like, oh, lovely i'd love to buy this for nine pounds oh lovely you know it's always in there with the stuff that no one wants and for me that shop has either got core products in that basically are just going to run out of shelf life because they've overproduced or they're there because no one wants it and so when i saw Too faced enter into the um cosmetic company stores it was an eyebrow moment for me where i was like mm, you're obviously failing or uh, you've made too much stock either or it's, it's not a good place to be and I have noticed all the discontinued stuff is starting to pop up in this store I did pick up the peach perfect powder from one of those stores so don't get me wrong I'm happy to sip because I get makeup on a discount but it, it never bodes well does it it doesn't scream success when you're in a discount store even if it is owned by your mother company it's, it doesn't scream we're thriving, does it? It doesn't for me anyway. I've actually only got two brands left to talk about, so I better hurry this up because I've like literally got an entire eye left to do. Um, another one I've got here is Clinique. So Clinique, I think, is great. Like their skincare is a vibe. I think they've got like a cult following and I think middle-aged people, um, that sounded like rude. I don't mean it in that way. I just think like people like my mum's age and my aunties, they are the ones keeping Clinique going <laughs> because I don't know anyone of my age group or younger significantly like oh my god I know no one younger than me after things from Clinique maybe like their makeup is sometimes interesting like I know that they have um a really good mascara for people that have sensitive eyes so maybe there's like a couple of cult products that they sell that people love and they go back for I, I don't doubt it, you know, it, that, that I wouldn't be surprised. I love Clinique's pop blushes, for example. I think they're quite modern and they're quite, um, they're fun and invite me in. But some things that Clinique sell, I just couldn't, I couldn't snore louder. I just couldn't snore louder. And I think that some of the things they sell are like boring, really boring. Like they'll come out with like, 13 well, okay that's a bit dramatic they'll come out with like a new foundation for example which is fun because found that new new foundations are always nice to try and stuff but where i'm at is colored cosmetics or color cosmetics for me 
brings people in because it's bright, it's exciting, or even if it's neutral, it's just exciting and people want to play around with it. But maybe Clinique know what they're doing. They know the category of people they're advertising to and that's absolutely fine and that's enough to keep them going and if that is praise to you you know you carry on i don't see clinique trying very hard to reach into different areas you know i feel like they scream we know who we sell to and we're happy in our lane if that's the case cool happy for you uh, i just don't think they're going to get any growth through what they're doing i can't see people um aged you know 16 to 35 wanting to purchase from them i might be completely wrong i just think they're heavily relying on their skincare and people 35 maybe 40 and above um for the makeup and if that's the case fair enough I'm sure, you know there's, there's always that demographic for it so you can't ap appease everyone but i don't know i just i just think they're a little bit boring and I'm sure they'll do fine because again they're owned by a massive mother company but it wouldn't surprise me if they took a left turn and went yeah we're going out of business I don't know it just wouldn't surprise me I'm gonna go away and finish my other eye because I actually had another I had two more brands I've just thought of another one um, to talk about but that's enough to just take me through mascara and lashes and then we'll be done so let me just quickly go off camera repeat what I've done on this eye and I'll be back okay eye makeup is on I use a little bit of that Oh, MAC highlighter that I put on my cheeks. Like, it is nice, but I feel like it's just like, where is it? But then it, like, catches the light. Oh, I don't know. Maybe I'll have to play around with it a little bit more. The first time using it. I put it a bit in the inner corners and on the brow bone, just as, like, the inner corner highlighter, because, whoa, when I opened this palette, um, there was nothing really in here that stood out to me for an inner corner, which is fine, because I'd rather have depth, which is what this palette has, than an inner corner, because I can use my highlighter. Uh, just for reference, let me turn it the right way up so you can actually see it properly. I used, very quickly, this one through the crease. Um, I then used this on the outer corner, then this on like the midsection, this to kind of like blow it out, and then the two metallics, the green metallic is this one, this one and then this one on the inner corner so like i kind of used all of the greens apart from this one and then like a few of these like brownie shades i thought i was going to use this one as well but it kind of pulled a little bit more tealy green so i don't want to throw in the red i thought that'd look a bit weird but you know me you know me i bloody love a green eyeshadow so i can't help myself all right it's my it's my comfort zone i'm going to use the urban decay lash freak mascara or as i like to call it the lash freaking annoying mascara it's amazing all right, it looks, on the on the lashes, when, once you've just decided to clear this mess up, your lashes look impeccable. Mine look really curly and I've got like proper pointed down lashes. So it's great, it's just a bloody pain in the ass. Also, we're taking this off, you gotta just get in the, like it's gotta be the days where you get in the shower. Like you can't afford to just be like lightly cleansing your face. This is the stuff that you need to get in the shower for because it ends up halfway down your face and you're like, wash it. Anyway, okay, moving on. Violet Voss. Um, what what are you doing <laughs> what are you doing violet voss because you're boring me i'm falling asleep um your packaging get someone else i'm sorry i'm sorry i was gonna say i mean no offense but if offense is taken then then what can i say get better be better do better um the packaging for violet voss palettes i think is so lackluster and you know in such a competitive market which is the beauty industry anyway but you know within makeup which is bloody competitive um violet voss is sending me to sleep and i can't see them uh you know with the repercussions of covid and what that's meant for a lot of businesses i can't see them lasting any longer um you know maybe they've got some cool ideas in the back of the the back of the barrel but uh if they do i think it's time to pull them out now because I can't think of a single release uh, that's been exciting. Like, I can't think of a single one that's been exciting for the last five years. Um, I've decluttered all of their makeup that I have from them because I think it's just boring. Um, I don't even think they need to be innovative. I just think they need to be a bit more eye-catching and have a bit of a unique selling point. And I think that's what it is. That there's no unique selling point with Violet Voss. It's just, it looks like someone with a makeup lab has gone okay i can produce the shadows who's gonna be on the marketing team no one because there's no one there so you've got like this um college person and when i say college i don't mean the unit i don't mean 
the USA version of like university diplomas, actual education. I'm talking about a 15, 16 year old uh, who's just on their way to college, kind of high school, I think you could call it. I'm not really too sure what, what that's called in other countries, but um, you know, someone that's not even of legal age to drink yet. And you've got them as like the intern who's like, yeah, Comic Sans is everything. Let's just paste it across all of our palettes. Um, let's not do any artwork. And when we do artwork, let's make it look like it's from clip art. Their packaging is just horrendous in my view, my personal opinion. Um, so, you know, if Violet Voss do kick the bucket, absolutely would not surprise me. It's just a real shame because I think their quality of makeup actually isn't that bad. It could be better. Um, they could do what an Ace Beauté did, reformulate everything, come back fighting, come back stronger, send out PR, do some exciting things. I just don't see them doing that. Um, and I just think it can only go one way because like really I can guarantee the normal average person does not know who Violet Voss is which says to me that you know they're relying on people that really like makeup they're relying on the beauty community and I don't think the beauty community are that thrilled by them I think that they're just boring and no one really cares so that's my view in a nutshell um, I've got one more brand to talk about and I've kind of been like last but not least uh, Smashbox. I think they're gonna do a Becca. I think they're gonna do a Becca. It feels, so Smashbox was on Beauty Bay and then came off again, obviously because they weren't selling stock or something happened. Uh, that's the vibe it gave me, um, was that they just weren't selling. Beauty Bay a little bit cutthroat, I've noticed that. If, the, if things aren't like selling rapid, rapido, then they're like, they're out. <laughs> they're out of that door um brands come and go on beauty bay it's a little bit frustrating if i'm perfectly honest i wish they would just like stick with it but you know business is business baby um i don't think smashbox is going to last that much longer they've recently is it them that's released the horror like for halloween um they've released kind of like the lipsticks and it was like the bride of chucky chucky frankenstein others and it's like lipsticks and something else uh, like liquid eyeshadows in like a pot or something i don't know what it was not in a pot like in a tube i don't know what it was that they released it didn't actually look that like that exciting but even when they do collaborations like i just feel like they miss the mark maybe i should do a video on smashbox missing the mark i did a missing the mark for makeup revolution eyeshadow specifically and um maybe i should do one on smashbox because i feel like they just missed the mark and Teresa is dead picked up on this because she loves like everything spooky spooky yuki you know um and she even said about that uh collaboration that release it just put herself in the eye <gasps> oh my god yeah she even said that if they had gone about it a better way of like classic horror and then like modern horror so like chucky jason um what's another one i don't know like Hannibal Lecter I don't know is that spooky I think spooky it freaks me out um and then maybe you know Frankenstein Dracula um what's that that Martian not Martian like the swamp creature that one you know like if they went for classic horror and then went for uh like modern horror I think that could have been like pop culture horror I think that could have been really cool because it'd have been like old new and then like people would have wanted all of it um and if the colors weren't so bloody strange as well I feel like Smashbox just missed the mark quite often um, and again, it, it wouldn't surprise me if they did a Becca and they just overnight were like, we're gonna have to pack up our doors, which is really sad because I think actually they can and do sell some, some really nice products, but a lot of things you're like, okay, no one cares about those bloody cream eyeshadows. No one cares. Like, okay, thanks. Thanks for letting me know. Like come out with some textures. Like textures are really, my eyes are really watering, sorry. I think texture um, in like eyeshadows and shimmery and different textures are something that's quite present at the moment. So, you know, come out with your cream eyeshadows if you must, but come out with one that's like a bit chunkier or a little bit like glitzier or like got a different texture to it. You know, have the matte satins and like chunky glitters. I don't know. Um, something just a bit different or like market it better i just i find smashbox a bit boring and when i do perk up and see something that i think is less boring they seem to just miss the mark with it so yeah it wouldn't surprise me if they go it'll be sad if they do um these sweet lashes are their tete <laughs> tete lashes <laughs> no it's like tete a tete titi a tete i don't know do you know what 
I bloody hate myself when I can't. It's, it's this one, okay? It's this one right here. A tete, a tete, no, no, tete, a tete. But they're really cool half lashes and they look right up my street. If I were to come out with a pair of lashes, these may be a little bit stronger in the lash band, but these would be it for me. I'm gonna apply these and then we'll finish up. Okay, the lashes are on. Oh my gosh, these lashes are absolutely beautiful. I'm looking really pale. Um, look how like cute these are. Like, look how like nice and curly they are on the out like outer corner but they're like not all up in my funk here <gasps> love so um, i'm waving this around i've well, i came across came across my jeffree star cosmetics resting rich face eyeliner and look what color it is it's green um the sacrifice that i had to make was well, not sacrifice but like the universe punishing me for using jeffree star clearly because i know i want to get some like probably some comment that I'm gonna to have to block, um, is that my nail polish chipped trying to get it out of the box that it was in. So can we just talk about, okay, my camera's not focusing. Can we just talk about how my nail polish is chipped right before I want to film some other videos and I did them yesterday. So really happy about that, really, really happy. I'm gonna put this green, it might make me look sick, but whatever, in the uh, waterline. Let's see, does it work? Eyes are really watery. Mm, interesting. Okay, it's like really creamy, but um, because my eyes are so watery, oh, I never pull on my eyes, but I think I'm gonna have to. Damn it. Yeah, because my eyes are so watery, it's like <laughs> not, it's not going on very well. Okay, that's a bit of a bust. I think it's because my eyes, like I said, for the fifth time, are like so watery. But on the upper lash line, I think that would work. I am gonna just like chuck this into the, what's on my face? Because why not? Um, video is done, let's zoom out. So this is the makeup look. We're looking severely pale, I love it. Um, looking like I need half my hair back, please. So if stress could stop, that would be nice. Look, look at this, oh my gosh. And a beautiful stripe like a zebra i love it i love it i actually really like this makeup thing it's really cute i mean it's green we know i love a green thank you guys for watching i hope you've enjoyed today's video i hope you enjoyed like the topic that we discussed about let me know what your thoughts are because i do think that these brands are in trubs in troubled waters if you will um so yeah if there's any brands that you can think of that you're like do you know what i haven't heard of them lately I think they're in trouble um then let me know because i'll probably end up agreeing with you because i agree with half of you guys like so you guys come back with like the best things to say and they're things that i wish i had seen before i posted the video because i'm like god damn yeah i couldn't agree more and then i want everyone to see it so you know read each other's comments talk to one another it's like a really good place to be and talk to me because i love looking at, at your comments even if sometimes i don't get to respond to you immediately i always like to leave a little love heart if i've read your comment um so even if i have like nothing to add or nothing to say and it's just like a lovely comment i'll always like favorite it and say like thank you for commenting and being here and usually if i'm love hearting it i'm smiling and reading it at the same time so anyway thank you guys for watching let me know what brands you think are in troubled waters i think there's quite a few i think there's quite a few i think the pandemic has knocked a few out of the ballpark and um some others are just like living thriving their living their best life and I think it'd be interesting to see where these brands that we've spoken about specifically today will be in a year from now, perhaps. Hmm. Hedge your bets now. Hedge your bets now. Which one do you think will go first? <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. Hope you've enjoyed. Take care. Stay safe. Leave a like button. No, don't leave a like button. Leave a like on that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Ring the bell. Be notified of all the videos I upload. And yeah, take care. Stay safe. Love you guys. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye.